Hello, good evening and thank you for joining us for another edition of News 360. It's live from our news hub here at Sadisawe Kanda. I am Portia Gabo. I am Alfred Okonse. Coming up tonight. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil, and Apa Foods. Kale Charcoal Toothpaste. The reconstruction of the community so that members of the community can be resettled. Affected people can move and then begin to live a normal life. And Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines and Energy charges government to expedite the reconstruction of the Apiati community following heavy rains which affected the temporary camp put up for victims. Also tonight, Dr. Bamiya's claims of $1 billion payment in annual excess capacity charges in energy paid by government are untrue, but according to Tamale North MP Al Hassan Suyini, And in business this evening, Ghana Union of Trade Association Guta slams the Bank of Ghana's directive against foreign currencies, pricing, insisting rather enforcement appears weak by the Bank of Ghana. On the international front, 12 soldiers in Burkina Faso and four volunteers killed in attack on a military base by suspected jihadists. We're live on TV3 on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, and all across the world on 3 News. Dot com is getting to the stories now as a parliamentary select committee on mines and energy has charged government to expedite the reconstruction of the apt community the committee fears the affected residents will have to deal with the effects of the incessant rainfall in the presia Hone valley area should they continue to be in the tents when the rains set in the Parliamentary Committee on Mines and Energy visited Apieti to commiserate with the affected victims. The visit was also to offer the members of the committee the opportunity to learn at first hand efforts made so far in terms of the extension of reliefs to the affected residents and the reconstruction of the community. While applauding government for the efforts so far, the committee wants the timetable on the reconstruction which starts from May 1 to be brought back. Ranking member on the committee, Abdullah Junapo, said the committee has learned that the area records rainfall every day and therefore will be instructive that government considers that in its planning to avert any disaster again. We would want to call on government to expedite action towards the reconstruction of the affected community. The rains have already started. This area experiences very heavy rainfall patterns. And so it's only proper and fair that government prioritizes the reconstruction of the community so that members of the community can be resettled. Affected people can move and then begin to live a normal life. Vice Chair of the Committee, Maurice Elvis Donko, charged the Reconstruction Committee to be transparent in the utilization of the funds and items received so far. We will engage uh, the Minister on how much, as the ranking said, what has been received so far, what has been used so far, and also the timelines for work, which is very, very important, very, very necessary. So timelines for the works that they're actually doing on site, we have to also uh, interrogate that to actually push the project forward. The Municipal Chief Executive for Apricia Huni Valley, Dr. Isaac Samani, briefed the committee on work done so far and current efforts to relocate some of the victims into permanent structures provided for by mining company Future Global Resources. Let's now go to Boku, where one person has died and several others have been rendered homeless after a rainstorm ripped through the community. The rainstorm in some parts of the Boku West District of the Upper East Region began around 5 p.m. Thursday, April 7. The rainstorm ripped off roofs of residential facilities, churches, schools, shops and electricity, high-tension cables, among others. 
some of the affected facilities are the Atari Kum and Tele Primary Schools, where the entire roof have been taken away in the storm. The Church of God Ghana at Sapelugu was holding a funeral rites before the disaster struck. The entire church was ripped off, leading to the death of one attendee. We saw that something knocked at the church here, but when the girl was lying, the head tied the zinc, but the zinc didn't. The zinc was not on top of the girl. But all what we saw is the chest here. We saw blood and then. It's unfortunate that the small girl lost her life. Uh, we are so sad uh, about the life of this uh, young lady. Now we are actually trusting God to help us put this church together. Some of those affected are now putting up under trees since the entire house were destroyed. They are appealing for immediate intervention. Yesterday we got the beginning of the storm. We know the storm is yet to come more. So we are pleading that things are put in place in order to mitigate the power of the, st the storm. Meanwhile, the Boku West NADMO director, Daniel Anania Atampuba, has tasked all zonal directors to take inventory of the damaged properties for the necessary action. Daniel Anania Atampuba has, however, urged the people in the district to take interest in trees planting to serve as windbreaks to reduce the intensity of such disasters in the future. In a related development, 20 primary JHS and Kusanaba senior high schools who suffered similar disaster last year are yet to attract any attention. Well, the Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Obamiya's claims of $1 billion payment in annual excess capacity charges in energy paid by government are untrue. That's according to the Tamale North Member of Parliament, Al Hassan Suhini. First, let's take a look at what the Vice President said yesterday. Some years ago, we had been confronted by very dire circumstances. The joblessness of our youth, the years of doom so that adversely impacted on businesses and jobs, the disappointment of dealing with a collapsed national health insurance system, and the inability to access health care, the bane of the cash and carry system, a nearly collapsed national system, the freeze on public sector employment, and an almost collapsed banking sector, and so on. The economy was on the verge of collapse, and a legacy of take-or-pay contracts saddled the economy with annual excess capacity charges of close to one billion US dollars a year. These were basically contracts to supply energy to Ghana way in excess of our requirements, but we were obligated to pay for the power whether we use it or not. We were confronted with a banking crisis, and not dealing decisively with it would have meant disaster for the economy. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the underlisted independent producers have received payments for excess capacity charge for the period under review 2017 to 2020, totaling 937.5 million US dollars. The breakdown is as follows AXA, 347.2 million dollars, car power. $359.00 million and sent power $231.3 million. June 17, 2021. Because of the figures that um, have been bandied around about excess capacity charges and how much we uh, pay annually, I filed a question to the finance minister to settle the figure once and for all. And the finance minister uh, attending upon parliament gave us the figures. And clearly in the answer, the 
Minister, in answering the question, said, and I quote, Mr. Speaker, these are very important issues of, of power for us as a country. Mr. Speaker, the underlisted independent power producers have received payments for excess capacity charge for the period under review into brackets 2017 to 2020, totaling 937.5 million US dollars. So really, what this means is that in four years, we did not pay up to even a billion dollars for what is termed as excess capacity charges for four years. So for the vice president to claim repeatedly in that lecture that we paid one billion annually, which will translate into four billion in four years, is such a gargantuan lie. Meanwhile, the Tamil North Member of Parliament is concerned such lectures by the Vice President seem to fail to address critical socio-economic challenges confronting Ghanaians. The same, when you have been in power for more than four years, the bar all of a sudden becomes higher for you. And I think the Vice President and his advisors missed that expectation that people had of him, a higher expectation for that matter. And so he was engaged in, you know, political propaganda and failed to take advantage of the opportunity to address the concrete, you know, uh, uh, bread and butter issues that the people are concerned with. So clearly, I think that it looked more like a man playing to the internal politics of the NPP, trying to you know, posture and grandstand to perhaps put fear, you know, in, in his opponents and give a semblance of one in control of the party and ready for the campaign ahead. Well, some NPP and PEs have mm -hmm. been defending some of the details mm -hmm. that the vice president put out yesterday during that two-hour presentation government has made significant progress in shoring up fundamental challenges plaguing the economy to help reduce prices of goods and services according to member of parliament for Nshaiso constituency dr stephen amwa i think sometimes because of ndc mpp policies that we all we are all found guilty we have defined certain parameters and terms and terminologies that do not happen as a country the fact of the matter is that, yes, there is hardship. The fact of the matter is that today, the economic para parameters, most of them are better, even that to GDP. We have to spend about 50 billion on IPP. We have to spend the same 50 billion, IPP, and then COVID, and then we have banking crisis. And then that 50 billion, we would have reduced our debt to GDP to about 68%. This is a fact. And the GDP that was not growing was because market had to shut down. If you don't go to the farm, will your farm go? And the GDP is the denominator. So once that is shrinking because of the crisis, the top will have bigger value and you have higher debt to GDP. But don't let us talk as if it's never happened. The year 2000, Ghana's debt to GDP was about 145.08%. Check that. And even if it's not, we take away GDP and consider only debt. Between 2008 and 2016, our debt was increased over thousand percent from 9.2 billion to 120.3 go and check 2012 to 2016 it was about 244 percent so what we are saying is that they are all not good we need to do better as a country but when people want to move beyond the crisis for us to find solutions and they want to blame us then we do comparison oh, we don't need that comparative analysis what do you need we want to i want our people to know that accountably we've done better we've done well and the crisis we are working on and we are giving back hope to them, inshallah, with the hard work of His Excellency Nana Dodanko Kufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Ghana will, will, will go back to, uh, to its stable stage and the growth graph. We'll see that. So we beg and yes, we know these are hard times. They should bear with us. We share with them. We buy high fuel and other commodities. It is a fact. But it is not a useless and hopeless situation. 
and former governor of the Central Bank and Finance Minister Dr. Kwabna Dufour has lashed out at government's lack of solutions to the country's economic challenges. He says the NDC has a better plan to win the 2024 elections and turn around the fortunes of the state. He was speaking at an event to launch the NDC's Ahoto program in Ashaiman. The campaign is geared towards galvanizing the support base of the party for election 2024. I want to assure you, we are there. We have won the elections in advance. All that we have to do is to get together. Let's love ourselves. Now, in fact, I don't care if you may have home. Now, at the community level, I'm going to be a hot one. 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 To Mr. Mo, in fact, I don't cut a hotel home. I don't pass a hotel. A progress of war. And to Mr. Mo, you're near Brick, said NDC, partner. You're back to me in 2024. You said, and you're not getting a chance here. Oh, come and be a kind of prayer. What about Papa? You're what? You're what? You're what? You're what? You're what? Papa no ote pati no no, o wa kuma pa. Ote opi a wogu biya no ipi e hiya fo, e hiya fo. Ote misa mwa, o do, ya hon to, e kulibidi e ba. We are turning NDC to be a business party. Smeo, you are right. With the support, the NDC is going to be a first class business party in Ghana. Well, let's stay on this event. For the former Minister of Trade and Industry, Dr. Ekos Gabra, he is of the view that the current government has failed in creating jobs for the Timi youth in the country. You can do better than those who are in charge of Ghana right now. Is that true? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. And one of the main ways to do things better is to create more jobs for our people. Is that true? Yeah. Do most Ghanaians want jobs? Do they want better jobs? And that is one of the things the current government is not doing well at all. Away from the economy, Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources Abnadapa has encouraged raw private sector investment in recycling of waste to generate energy to reduce the 7 million tons of waste generated annually. She assures government is ready to support any private entity that will venture into the green energy space. The Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources was touring a crack compost and recycling plant to get first hand information. The plant, which processes 600 metric tons per day of municipal solid waste, is received at a plant for sorting to produce organic compost. The plant is currently taking up approximately 50% of the total waste lifted and transported from the various municipalities that would have otherwise ended up on the landfill. By processing waste into compost and other items, the environment is saved from heavy greenhouse gas emissions as predominantly the case on landfills, hence the encouragement of private entrepreneurs to invest in the sector. Our doors are still open for proposals and suggestions. I always say that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Some wheel sizes are there already to be chosen to fit into your car. The managing director of the plant, Michael Paddy Tuo, said the second phase of the recycling plant to turn waste to energy and fuel. We are looking at adding on to refuse derived fuel and that's the next phase of our, our operations. And once we commercialize this product, then it means that we are recovering close to 90-95% of the total waste that comes to us here. We would have added value to them and send it back into the system for reuse. The plant is currently providing jobs to over 300 staff for sorting and composting plants in Accra and also looking forward to investing further in the recycling segment to add value to recovered plastics. <laughs> The Minister of Food and Agriculture and the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, have developed a technical cooperation project 
to enhance climate resilience and emergency preparedness amongst rural dwellers. The project seeks to build the capacity of rural communities to undertake interventions that will promote and strengthen the resilience against climate change impact on agriculture and fish production. Rural communities are among the most vulnerable to effect of climate change. The technical cooperation project by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, is to enhance their resilience and emergency preparedness among rural dwellers. The project currently being piloted in two districts aims at sustainably improving rural household food security. It is also estimated that food NCT will be to climate-related disasters may increase up to 20% by 2050 unless adequate and appropriate adaptation and mitigation measures are instituted to strengthen the resilience of vulnerable populations. National Project Coordinator for the project, Dr. Solomon Jan Ansa, explained the choice of the two districts for the pilot project. We chose these two districts because they are all disaster prone areas with respect to climate variability and boko west district was chosen because there are seasonal floods there are droughts sometimes there are evasive pets that happens all year round and there's the need to build the capacities of farmers or the beneficiaries in early warning systems, disaster risk reduction, emergency preparedness. The project seeks to enhance the capacity of rural communities to undertake interventions to promote and strengthen the resilience to public education and awareness creation. The Ghana Police Service says it is committed to ensuring a reduction in road traffic accidents, particularly those caused by motorcycles, in a fresh campaign dubbed Operation Pari, that's police action against rider indiscipline. Director General of Police Public Affairs Directorate, DCOP Kwesifori, is optimistic the objective will be attained. The Ghana Police Service is clamping down on recalcitrant motor riders in the capital in what the service is calling Operation Pari. This initiative has multiple components being introduced in phases. The first involves the deployment of teams of police riders with body cameras to monitor the conduct of riders at major intersections and other strategic locations. DCOP Chrissy Ferry explains more. It has been observed that motor riders cause a lot of road accidents in the country. Looking at the trend, the indiscipline level from the riders, it is prudent and necessary that the police administration take steps to contain it. Kickstart in Accra, but it is something that is going to be replicated throughout the whole country. We are all over the place and we are going to make sure that we achieve our objectives. For now, men deployed have been given the body cameras. It is important that police adduce evidence. Here at the Opongolo intersection, which usually records a lot of rider in discipline, the situation was different due to the presence of the officers. Recalcitrant riders were given a chase and were apprehended. There's an ambulance on my, in the front of me. So they, they, they stop the cars for the ambulance to pass. So we have to come so that the ambulance to, will close. You see, so I just passed through. We are expecting you to respect the rules and regulations in this country. So we are moving to the station. Okay. Thank you. So get the car. When the light is red, you are supposed to stop. So it is wrong for you to pass through the red light. Exactly like it was yellow, so I jumped and then they said I've, I've jumped a, a red light. Yes, I'm pleading with them, so I'm just asking them to forgive me. This is my first time that it happened, it never happened before. It was traffic, but the cars wasn't going, so I, I moved to the traffic and he, he caught me. I'm even holding my vaccination here, which is very emergency. I need to deliver it very urgent. But the person is my wife, she just delivered and she just delivered. So they, they told me to come and buy the vaccination so the, the baby can be injected before she can give her. She can give the baby 
breast milk. On how sustainable the campaign is, DCO Pikusi Fori says the service will not relent in its efforts. We're going to be segmented in a way. We're going to roll out different programs. So we might monitor the pros and cons of this exercise. And as we move on, we might devise, heighten, or even uh, scale down our operation depending upon the outcome of our objectives. The police administration also cautioned the right and public to be self-disciplined to avoid punishment. Well, many slums in Accra have been cited as breeding grounds for social vices, including gang violence and the indiscriminate use of drugs, with unemployment being a major cause. In Nima, community leaders are seeking the help of security agencies in ensuring law and order in the area. Like many Zango communities, Nima is stereotyped as radical, violent, and opposed to law and order. And the January 18, 2022, violent gang clashes between the Kumoji and Bombom gangs, unfortunately, seem to be affirming this prejudice. Community leaders are seeking the help of security agencies in ensuring that perpetrators of such violence are brought to book. The chiefs have no authority. We haven't got the power. We can speak, but we haven't got the weapon to strike. Chief can call somebody arrest, unless the police. If the police doesn't help the chief, how can we do? My life is in danger. Our lives are in danger. When we do our work, the police sponsor our work. They go to court to release the boys immediately. It's very, very wrong. Another hurdle facing leaders in the community is narcotic abuse by the youth. In corners around in Nima here, where you see people selling drugs and all this, there are landlords. If only the government is very serious. The world can easily arrest. There are heads. They should be invited. We want to clean the society. So we suffer from the landlords. When a person takes a drug, he doesn't know what to do. Just to do whatever he wants. So those drugs, we have to look for where those drugs are coming from. You will not even expect that these are the people who are selling them. MP for the area, NASA. Mahama Turi says a watchdog group has been created to dismantle ghettos where such vices are rampant. The watchdog that is coming, we are forming now, we are trying to make sure we dismantle the ghettos because if there is no ghettos, the people who come from far places and they come to Nima and there is no ghetto where they will go and sit and be, and be smoking or and be taking some drinks. They won't come. These ghettos are where some of these young men find solace. So they live in different parts of Nima, they usually meet up to look for ways to survive. While this fairly misconception, ghetto youth are the perpetrators of criminality in the community, they want more to be done in creating employment opportunities. <laughs> It's because of how difficult the system has become that some of these things happen. If someone calls me to go and help them fight for even 10 cities, I will go, even if we have to use knives or whatever. We sometimes survive on the benevolence of others. Things are really hard for us here. Assemblywoman for Nima East Electoral Area, Rukayalia Suyusi, says the youth in the area are selective about the kind of job they want, and that is why they are unemployed. Our youth is not easy. They have their own choice of work. When you give them a job, they will decide not to do. What worries them a lot is money. At first time, they will ask you, how much are they going to pay them? They have to be interested in the job before the money. If you are too interested in their money, then the job, you cannot do it. As much as some of these views are true of slums, they are an integral part of these communities. In this case, Nima, an urgent attention is needed to transform the community. Aisha Yakubu Halid, TV3 News. A great piece there by Aisha Halid. Stay with us on News 360. 
We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. We have business news coming up shortly with Della Michelle. Good evening, it's night time for business news. My name is Della Michelle. President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obain, says the Bank of Ghana has itself to blame over the flouting of foreign exchange regulations. He expects the central bank to rather clamp down on persons dealing in forex business and those benchmarking goods and services in foreign currencies. This is an indictment on Bank of Ghana itself. Does that, does that mean that they are unable to enforce its own bylaws and all that? I, I'm very surprised. So um, um, whenever there's a crisis like this, then they come and then it becomes an ad hoc uh, measure. And then they leave it. The earlier that they enforce this law, the better for, uh, for all of us. But otherwise, people will lose confidence in their directives because they, they are in charge of this. And they, 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 do, they have to be assertive. This is the fourth time. So now who is going to take them serious? Because the, the power lies on you. You have your directives, you have your policy, and you have to enforce it to the latter. And so bringing this letter doesn't mean anything to us. They only have to go and clamp down on those who are um, uh, trading in the forest. They have to uh, go and clamp down those who are benchmarking their price in dollars and all that. And Guinness Ghana has unveiled an exciting new look for its award-winning Lager Star beer. The relaunch is to leverage on the latest brewed technology that comes with an improved taste as well as renewed and vitalized label. Star Beer won gold at the 2022 Monday Selection World Quality Awards, making it the fourth time the brand has achieved this incredible feat. The new look reinforces the brand as one made by Ghanaians for Ghanaians, with a sparkling Ghanaian spirit written boldly on the neck label. While the new label sports the signature brand colors of Star Beer, blue and yellow, representing the warmth or shine within Ghanaians' renewed energy for the brand. At the relaunch event, the head of beer, Roland Labiofori, reiterated that the quality taste consumers have remains. It was a good opportunity to leverage our latest brewing technology to, you know, bring the best style we've ever produced and also refresh our label to bring that spark, to bring that warmth, to bring that optimism so that Ghanaians can see that, yes, this is the, the, the beer truly made for them. For us to continue another 62 years, as we've done already. Here is the Managing Director of Guinness, Ghana. We have really put the quality of our beers at a very high level. And that is because we want to make sure that the promises that we make to our consumers, that we live up to that every day. She expressed a desire for Ghanaians to enjoy the goodness of star beer through the Easter celebrations and encourage patrons to drink responsibly as well. It's now time to bring you our Friday special business feature. They say a dog is a man's best friend, and for Eric, this adage is more true than ever. As a mobile groomer, Eric has turned his hobby into profits in the business of dog grooming. In the first of our series on our dog conversations, Nanekria Mensa Abrampa caught up with him on one of his grooming sessions. Dog grooming is one of the most popular careers for those in the dog lover's value chain. One of such is Eric Kadai, who has channeled his passion into a business venture. Eric Adai has been running the dog business for the past 15 years, but decided to move into mobile grooming, which he's been doing in the last three years. And we caught up with him here at the Regimental Grey Estate to look at how business is faring for him. For 39-year-old Eric, dog grooming is only an aspect of his work with dogs. It takes more than just the love for the home pet. I bag the dog, I cut their nails, I clean their ears, and also um, I check the skin if there's any issue. If there's anything, I, can, I will let the owner know so that they can just treat it or maybe take good care of it. He's just one of many young people who turned dogs in the latest craze of human-dog relationships. On a regular day, Eric does at least four visits 
to do what he has come to master. I do it from Monday to Saturday. Mm. Yeah, but uh, normally Saturdays are a bit busy because most of the clients are in the house. So they like Saturdays. Mm. Okay. So you can see their dogs being grown and doing. And after the day's work with satisfied clients, healthy dogs, and Eric is a happy man. He would go at it the next day. The grooming part, there's a lot of challenges because of uh, we don't get the tools here. You have to order it from outside. And some of them, the dogs, they are aggressive. Mm -hmm. So to even hold them like how this one is calm and sweet, it's very difficult. But is this rewarding enough to keep us a job in the face of the economic crunch? So it's a big, 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 big business in Ghana. Now. In Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can enter one house, you meet like 10 dogs. You meet like 5 dogs, 6 dogs. The prices goes according to the distance and also the big, the size of the dog. I charge from 170 up. Maximum can be 400 Ghana. Pascal, come. Dog rearing has become an integral part of people's lives, so much so that some develop more than a bond with their dogs. I just love having them around. Man's best friend, Pascal, joined us this year. So Pascal is really Nash's companion. I think people invest in different things. Right. Some people buy shoes, some people buy bags, we do dogs. Whichever reason you decide to keep a dog, key thing, they must be properly cared for. And so long as they remain with us, they would be part of our lives. Nana Ikuya, Mensa Brampa, TV3. Hi, good evening. Time now to do sports news. My name is Yao Ufusulabi. To our first story, and former Black Stars player Samalinkum has joined Ghanaian Premier League side Accra Hearts of Oak. Now, the ex Basel defender has spent a one year deal with the current Premier League champions. The player made the deal official today and is currently waiting for his international transfer certificate, the ITC, to make his debut for the Fulbians. He has been training with Accra based club since the start of March in order for the technical team to assess his match fitness. He was part of the Kotoko side that won the Ghana Premier League in 2008 before joining Swiss Giants SC Basel. And now some more stories. And Asante Kotoko will lock on to Dakar Hats of Oak this weekend as the fight for the Ghana Premier League trophy continues. The Porcupine Warriors will be looking to end their first win over the Phobians this season while some of side aim to stretch their beaten record to three games. My colleague Bill Eshan came up with this preview ahead of the anticipated class. Asante Kotoko aimed to extend their lead over Heart of Oak to 16 points as both teams face each other in the Super Clash on Sunday at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Heart of Oak, however, aimed to maintain the unbeaten record against the Porcupine Warriors this season. Now, both teams have enjoyed unparalleled success in the Ghana Premier League, winning 45 trophies between them since its inception in the 1950s. Now, this game is expected to produce a lot of action, a lot of drama, and a lot of goals. Going ahead into the fixture, Kotoko's head coach, Prosper Nate, has stated that he is um, concerned about the injury issues that is surrounding his team, and that has forced him to play some players out of position. For Hasufok, however, with Samuel Buedu, he has stated that he will prepare his side thoroughly for the fixture, but he expects whatever happens on the pitch to decide whoever wins this particular clash. Now, since 2006, both teams have met on 27 occasions in the Ghana Premier League and Hearts of Folk have won 10 times with Asante Kotoko winning 7. And the most surprising thing here is that Hearts of Folk have only lost one game, one away game against Asante Kotoko in the Ghana Premier League in their last 13 attempts and they have won 6 times along the way. And so Kotoko will be under huge pressure to deliver in front of their own fans. As to whoever would come out victorious, that will definitely be anyone's guess. But as expected, this game will produce a lot of drama, a lot of action, and some beautiful football. 
Well, the Ghana Premier League match day 24 game between Asante Kotoko and Accra Hearts of Oak is now scheduled to kick off at 3 p.m. on Sunday, April 10, 2022, at the Babara Stadium in Kumasi. Now, kickoff time for the match has been changed due to the advice from the Ghana Police Service. Now, my colleague Ralph Sakode in Kumasi has been speaking to some of the fans ahead of the big clash. Hearts of Oak fans are confident that even though Kotoko may win the league, they are not ready to let them have a win over them. Kotoko fans are sure that they will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. Oh. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. We will get this one over Hearts of Oak. Ecoye <laughs> Well, those are fans there in Kumasi, and it should be a big clash on, on Sunday when Accra Hearts of Oak take on Kumasi as Antiko Toko in there. Now, let's just check out the other fixtures in the Ghana Premier League. It's not a super clash, that's the only fixture over the weekend. There's Karela who take on Accra Lions Football Club. That is a game that comes off tomorrow at 3 p.m. And then Ashgold will also face Wafa at the Obwasi Link Clay Sports Stadium. On Sunday, Bichin United will take on the Gold Stars. And then Brickham Chelsea will take on Legon City's Dreams, will face 11 Wonders. The Sharks will also face King Faisal. Accra... Great Olympics, who, are, who lie fifth on the league table, will also face the general stars in Accra. Midiama will take on Real Tamale United in Takwa. And Asante Kotoko, Accra Hearts of Oak, is the biggest fixture. Hello there and welcome to the entertainment news segment. I'm Anita Ukiyokufu. Now, co-star of popular TV series Taxi Driver Miki Osaibekun, known popularly as Master Richard, has revealed some of the challenges the late Salma Jetifio went through while he was alive. Speaking earlier on Midday Live, the renowned actor said the late TT was in dire need of help when he publicly solicited for funds for his upkeep. It will take me some amount of time to find the courage to believe that he's gone. But for now, I, I'm, still, I'm still finding strength enough to believe. Titi was a big brother uh, to me. I mean, a very great friend. Even at the latter parts of his life, we kept in touch and we spoke very often. He, he explained to me his predicament because he felt that I could understand where his thoughts are and what he's going to. And I did very well, you know. I, I a bit of the time that he was bashed in the media. I, I, when I got the opportunity, I tried to tell the people that the man is ill. You know, I needed support rather than the castigations here and there. But you know, I don't know. I don't know, but. We lost, we lost TT and I can't believe it. We lost the teacher. We lo we've lost a very great actor. And, and it will be difficult for us to find his kind. Probably not in this lifetime. I'm telling you, I've never been high feeling that he had so much we couldn't even tap into. And it's sad that we are letting people like him just go away, slide away like that, without building upon their legacy to 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 help the future. If we create opportunities for these people to earn enough. Now, veteran Ghanaian actor and star of the Taxi Driver series, Sam Ajit, if you like I mentioned earlier, passed away today. And in celebrating his life as an actor, he has some fond memories of his time on the popular Taxi Driver series. Taxi Driver was a fast-paced, humorous sitcom focused on Sam Ajete Fio who played the character Titi, a sharp and meticulous taxi driver. Each episode narrated the dealings of a taxi driver in relation to his passengers, his wife and his loud and inconsiderate car owner. These series may be over, 
but will forever be remembered for projecting positive messages. I stay here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days in a year. See ya. Thank you so much, Anita. Coming up, international news. The military in Burkina Faso says at least 12 soldiers and four volunteers have been killed in an attack on a military base by suspected jihadists. It says 21 troops were also injured in the attack on the Namisi Guima military detachment in the north. Islamist militants started carrying out raids in Burkina Faso from bases in neighboring Mali in 2015. Since then, 1.8 million people have been displaced by the violence. A military government seized power in January and ousted President Rod Kabori, blaming him for failing to tackle the jihadist insurgency. Last month, at least 10 soldiers were killed in Burkina Faso's eastern region. A Western official confirmed Russia had now reorganized the command of its operations in Ukraine with the general now in charge having had extensive experience from Syria. The forces which invaded on February 24 were organized and commanded separately from the district from which they had come. There's more news on 3news.com. Please make some time and visit 3news.com. Well, that's it for News 360. On behalf of the rest of the team, we appreciate your company. I am Alfred Okansi. And I am Portia Gabo. Have a great weekend.